In this lecture, we're going to look at how we can add validation to our model-driven forms. By the end of this lecture, you're going to know how to add validation checks to our form via the form model. You're going to know how to style a form in order to give visual feedback to the user so they know when fields fail validation checks. And you're also going to know how to add validation error messages to the form to give hints to the user about why the field isn't passing a validation check. Now we're going to carry on from the model driven form we started in the previous lecture. Now one thing you might notice about the form is that it's actually valid all the time regardless of what input the user types into the controls. Validators are rules which an input control has to follow. If the input doesn't match the rule, then the control is said to be invalid. Now, since we're creating a signup form, most of the fields should actually be required. And I would want to specify some more complex validators, especially on a password field, to make sure the user is entering a good, strong password. Now we can apply validators either by adding attributes to the template HTML or by defining them on our form controls in our model. And to stick to the theme of being model driven, we're going to add validators to the form model directly. Angular comes with a small set of pre-built validators to match the ones we can define via standard HTML5 attributes, namely required, min length, max length, and pattern. And we can access all of these from the validators module. So let's import the validators class in the top of our file to begin with. Now again, it comes from the Angular Forms module, so we import it from there. And then we'll scroll down to our form model. The first parameter of a form control constructor is the initial value of the control. So we'll leave these as empty string for now. The second parameter contains either a single validator if we only want to apply one or a list of validators if we want to apply multiple validators to a single control. So for the first name and last name fields, I want to add a single validator, a validator of required. So we leave the first parameter as blank because that's the initial value. And then I just type validators.required and that will add the required validator to the, to the first name field. Let's do the same for the last name field. But for the email field, I want to apply multiple validators. I want to apply, well, firstly, I want it to be required. And secondly, I want to make sure that the email that the user passes in matches some regular expression I'm going to provide. So again, I want to have the first parameter as blank because the initial value is going to be empty. Then I'm going to pass in an array as the second parameter. The first validator I want to pass in is the required validator. And the second validator I'm passing in is a pattern validator. And to that pattern validator, I'm going to pass a regular expression and this regular expression is just saying that the email field must contain the at character. Now, similarly for the password field, I want to make sure that it has two validators. One is the required validator and the other one is the min length validator. I'm going to say that a password must have a minimum of eight characters in length. Again, I'm going to pass an empty string as the first argument, then an array. The first validator is required. And for the second validator, I'm going to pass in min length. And I pass the min length the number eight because I want the minimum length of this field to be eight characters long. And let's leave our language select box as is with no validators. Now, before we go any further, let's have a quick discussion about the form control state. The form control instance on our model encapsulates state about the control itself, such as if it's currently valid or if it's been touched. And we can get a reference to these form control instances in our template through the controls property of our my form model. So for example, we can print out the dirty state of the email field. 
So in our template, we can print out the value or we can get a reference to the email form control from myform.controls and then the name of our form control on our form model. And now I'm printing out the dirty property on our form control. Now dirty is true if the user has changed the value of control. And the opposite of dirty is actually pristine. And pristine would be true if the user hasn't changed the value and false if the user has. So now if I rerun our application, you can see under the email field, we have two uh, debug statements. I'm printing out one for dirty and one for pristine. By default, dirty is false because we haven't touched it. And pristine is true again because we haven't touched it. And now as soon as I touch it, you can see it's now become dirty and it's not pristine anymore. So there's two other states we can take a look at, touched and untouched. So a control is said to be touched if the user focused on the control and then focused onto something else. For example, by clicking into the control and then pressing tab or clicking onto another control in the form. Let me add these again to our email field. So the difference between touched and dirty is that with touched, the user doesn't need to actually change the value of the input control. So you can see touched and dirty are both false right now. If I click into the input field, they're still both false. But if I then just click into another field like last name, you can see that touched turned to true, but dirty is still false. Dirty only becomes true if, we, if the user actually enters some value into the field. And the opposite of touched is the property untouched. And finally, we can also check the valid state of the control with the valid property. So running the application again. So valid is true if the field doesn't have any validators or if all the validators are passing. And again, the opposite of valid is invalid. So currently the form is invalid, it's not valid. And that's because, well, it's required for one and the second validator we added was to make sure that the email contains an at character. So if I just add a value, so asim, that's not good enough. It's still invalid because it's still not a valid email field. It's one, only one of the validators is passing the required validator right now. So now if I just type the at character, you can see that the valid turned to true because now we're passing both the validators I've set on this email control. Okay, now we've added validators to our model form and I've showed you how to inspect the state of our form control. The next topic we're gonna to talk about is validation styling. How do we actually show the user some visual styling about the validation state of their controls? Now Bootstrap, Twitter Bootstrap has classes for showing visual feedback for form controls when they are invalid. For instance, we can add the has danger class to the parent div of the input control with the class of form group. And this adds a red border to our control. So let me show you. So looking at the email field, if I just added the class has danger as a sibling to the form group, and I'll just rerun the application, you can see the email field now has a red border. The opposite of that is the class has success. And we can see that now has a green border. So we can combine the bootstrap classes with the dirty and invalid form control properties and the ng class directive to give the user some nice visual feedback. So what we want to do is we want to conditionally add the has success class or the has danger class, depending on whether the user has uh, dirty the field and whether the field is invalid. So to do that, we use the ng class directive. And if you remember with ng class, we can pass into it an object with each key being a class that we want to add. So we would want to add either the has success class or the has danger class. So I, want, I would want to add has danger if the form field is invalid. 
So let me copy and paste this one at the bottom. So has danger is when the form field is invalid. And the opposite is for has success at the top. So I want to would I would want to show has success when the form field is valid. So I want to show has danger when it's is when it's invalid and has success when it's valid. So now if I rerun the application. So I made a mistake, I need to add, I need to use single quotes instead of double quotes here. So now if I re run the application, you can see straight away the email field is invalid. So we're showing a red border. And then as soon as I add a valid email, the border turns to green. But that's not really a great user experience. We don't want to sh immediately show the user a red border um, to indicate the forms invalid. A blank form is always going to be invalid. We only want to show the red border when they've either touched the form or they have uh, tried to type some data in. So when it's either invalid, sorry, when it's either dirty or touched. So what we do is we say my form controls dot email dot valid and dirty or touched. Okay. So only show the green border if the field is dirty or touched. And again for invalid. So now if I rerun the application, and you can see initially the email field, it doesn't have a border at all. And even if I click on it, it still doesn't have any specific colored border. If I then click away, it's gonna show me the red border. And now if I rerun the application again, if I click in and then I start typing, it will then show me the red border to indicate well, what I've entered so far into the field isn't valid. And as soon as I enter a valid value, it turns green. And that's a really good user experience for users of your application with forms. Okay, so although that's a really nice user experience, it can quickly become pretty cumbersome to write these long expressions in our forms. We're going through myform.controls.email and then .valid, we have to repeat that many times in our expressions. And if we wanted to do this for the nested form, form controls, such as first name and last name, we would need to go through controls, then .name, then controls, then first name. It, it, quickly, the expression becomes very, very, very unwieldy. But we can help ourselves here by creating local properties on our component to reflect the individual form controls and binding directly to them in our template. So I scroll down to the model form component. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extract each of these form controls and I'm going to store them as separate properties on our component. I'm going to now just cut away and come back with some, some code pasted in. So now coming back to our component, I've changed a few things. I've added the first name, last name, email, password, and language properties on our component. I've then created a function called create form controls. And all this does is it creates the form controls themselves. It doesn't create or attach them to the form, to the my form model. It literally just creates the individual form controls. And then I have another function called create form and inside here, this is why I create the actual form model itself. And for each of the form elements, I'm actually just referring or pointing it to the form control I created previously. But the important thing here now is that now on our component, we actually have some properties that I can bind to or refer to directly from my template without having to go through a long expression. So now if I go back into the template above for the email, I don't need to go through my form.controls to get to the email field anymore. I can just shorten that to just email.valid. Oh, a little mistake, I missed out the bracket there. So now if I rerun the application,
you can see that the email field still has the same validation logic as we had previously, but we're just using a much more succinct and shorter set of expressions in our template. Now, as well as styling a form when it's invalid, it's also useful to show the user error messages with helpful hints about how they can make the form valid again. Now, taking what we've learned so far about form validation styling, we can apply the same method to conditionally show or hide an error message. And again, Twitter Bootstrap conveniently has some markup and classes for form controls, which we can use to show these error messages. Now let's add one for the password field. In fact, let's add it to the email field. Now for Twitter Bootstrap, the markup is a div block, which we place just underneath the input field. And it has a class of form control feedback. And if we put a P tag in here, this will now render out underneath the email field as a nice little helpful message. In fact, let me just show you what it looks like. So you can see here it says email is required and it has a nice styling characteristic that if the border is red, the text will be red. And if the border is green, the text will be green. But right now the message is always displayed. It's always saying email is required. So what we want to do is we want to conditionally show this error message when the field is invalid. So I'm just going to add an ng if directive and I'm just going to add the same condition that I've added for our has danger class to our form group. So now if I rerun the application, we don't see an error message to begin with. But then if I click away, it then says email is required. But then we have this additional problem that if I actually type into the input box, the required validator is actually passing, but the pattern validator is failing. However, we're still only showing the email is required error message. Like this field has two validators associated with it. How do we show a separate validation error message for each of those validators? Now we can do that by checking another property on our form control called errors. And this is an object which has one entry per validator. The key is the name of the validator. And if the value is not null, then the validator is failing. So how I like to use this is then I say on our top div, I say if the email has errors and it's dirty or touched, then we have two validation error messages we can show. And the second validation message is something along the lines of the email address must contain at least the at character. Now I only want to show the email is required message if the errors object contains the key required. So if the errors object contains the key required, then it will show this message email is required. And for the second one, if the errors object contains the pattern key, then that means the pattern validator is failing and we want to show the second message. So now if I rerun this application and let's click into and out of the email field and that's saying the email is required. That's because the required validator is failing and therefore we're showing that first message. But then as we type into this, the required validator isn't failing anymore because we've entered a value, but the pattern validator is now failing. And that's why we're showing the second message. The email address must contain at least the at character. And then as soon as that validator is passing again, then no validators are failing and we're showing the green border. To summarize, we can add validators to our form model, which check each field for validity. We can then render the controls with styling to show the user when fields are invalid. And then we can show the user helpful error messages so they know how to make the form valid again.
And next up, we'll look at how to submit and reset a model-driven form.